you can't begin to understand the real story of Varg unless you understand that it is a love story in essence. It's a story of a man's passion for a boat and the fact that that passion was shared by his wife as well is something quite extraordinary. They saw her first when she was a wreck. She had not long before been on the bottom of Sydney Harbour, underwater totally, but when she was raised up she still had a metre and a half of dirty water in a bilge and she was filthy. But Craig, because he's an aesthetic guy, he's a guy whose whole life is in design and photography, he saw beyond the wreck. He saw the beautiful long overhangs. He saw the pedigree of this boat designed by Johan Anker, the master of lines. And he thought, I must have this boat. This boat has been waiting for me and so my job is to restore her. So he began to negotiate for her and uh, the fellow who owned her uh, wanted a large sum of money. Craig was prepared to pay it, but first he was clever, uh, clever enough to say, I must get a, uh, a professional boat builder and marine surveyor to come on board and, and check her out and make sure that she can be restored. So he, he got a very, very famous boat builder, Doug Brooker, to come on board. And uh, Doug is a man who does not mince his words. He said, and I won't use the expletive, but he said she's finished. Please don't uh, waste any money here. Don't waste time on this boat. She is completely finished. And to prove the point, he took out of his pocket a pen knife and he stuck it into the spongy uh, uh, wood here and there. And, and he said that this boat is finished, so don't waste money, don't waste time on it. So Craig got his deposit back, and then he went to Sardinia, to Costa Smeralda, and there he was reinvigorated by seeing the classic boat regattas there, these beautifully restored boats on the med, in the Med are racing. He came back to Sydney and wanted that boat more than ever, and so he renegotiated uh, a deal with this uh, fellow who owned Varg and um, he was able to buy her despite the professional advice uh, to the contrary. So then he had to look for uh, a place to restore her and that was not Sydney because the Sydney boat builders charge at least a hundred dollars an hour and we're looking at years of work to, to do this. So he took her down to uh, Signet in Tasmania and there at a very famous boat yard, the Wilson Brothers yard. There were men who had the capability, the technical skills uh, to, to, to do the work, but they said, look, they repeated the, the phrase uh, from Doug Brooker, she's finished, please don't waste money, don't waste time on this wreck. If you wish, we can recreate precisely the lines of this boat and take the, the lead keel take some of the fittings, the bronze fittings off, and we will build you an exact copy of the original. And so that was what uh, Craig agreed to do. And it took six, six and a half years before these craftsmen, the Wilson brothers, were able to, uh, Michael Wilson and Innes, the two boat builders who worked together to rebuild uh, Varg. It took them six years because they had a lot of difficulty finding the uh, Huon Pine in sufficiently long lengths that would withstand the twist and the bend that was needed to steam the planks around. So she is a masterpiece now and uh, we're about to take her back to uh, her birthplace in Norway for the, Austra for the world, as Australia's representative at the World Championships in August of 2017. We're hoping to race against King Harold and his uh, Johan Anker designed the yacht Sira and 40 other yachts from around the world. So here is a dream, a dream come true in a way. It's a rare thing I think for a, a man and a woman to share the dream, share the passion and to uh, be so committed to an aesthetic ideal that they would cling to uh, this uh, design imperative which brings everything back to 1924. There's no modern fittings on this boat. 
everything is exactly the way it was when she was launched in Asker in Norway in 1924. And I'm sure that if the ghost of Johan Anker could walk on these decks, he would feel at home. He would see uh, what we see today, the masterpiece that he created as the master of lines. This was his masterpiece, I think. And in 1926, don't forget, she won the uh, eight meter class at Cowes Week. So all the uh, eight, the best of the eight meters uh, boats in, the, in Britain and Europe were racing at Cowes Week and uh, Varg, or Norn as she was then called, uh, won that regatta and with Lord Forster at the helm. So uh, she's got a pedigree, she's got a history that makes her unique and special. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing for Craig and Carolyn, his wife, to have done, to, to breathe new life into this wonderful boat. Well, if I go back 12 years ago, I was looking for a bit of a retirement project. Little did I realise what I was getting into, but um, I didn't know much about classic yachts. We, we, were, we were sailing modern yachts, and, and uh, I, I could only see that modern yachts would devalue very quickly, and um, these classic yachts, well, they, they just keep lasting forever and they sort of hold their value. So we found this old wreck, Varg, um, up in Sydney, or Norn it was known then, uh, and it was completely waterlogged, it sunk, terrible things had happened to it, and we, we dragged the we dragged the old wreck back uh, d down to Tasmania because we figured this is where all the, the really lovely timber is, the human pines and so forth, and the celery tops, uh, and, and also the good shipwrights. Um, and it, it appeared to be a cheaper, a cheaper place to rebuild a boat as well. So we came down to Wilson's, we discovered the Wilson's boat shed in Signet, and the way we went, we started off with them. and. Um, David Vieira in Portugal, who's an eight metre specialist, re, uh, got the drawings for the boat from um, the Maritime Museum in Norway, Johan Anker's original drawings, and redrew them all and got them up to speed with full dimensions and um, full size uh, drawings so that we didn't have to do any lofting on the shop floor. And Wilson's rebuilt the boat over a period of about um, six, six solid years, working every day, two guys. and. Um, uh, did a superb job. I mean, their the, the work is, is really, really fine work, and there's a lot of boat builders down this way. And uh, honestly, no one's been able to do any work that compares with the work that they did. So they they got Varg all finished, and we got her out of the shed finally. And Carl Anderson made sails over in Melbourne. Mitre cut sails and um, Sean Langman, the rigger, came down and he wanted to do the rigging, so he did the rigging. Um, one of our bowman, Lockie, uh, made the mast um, out of spruce, 12 metre long lengths of spruce um, from Holland, originally from Alaska, of course. Um, and then we had a boat ready to sail. So we, we sail her at the little local sailing club down at Signet. We race her all the time, every weekend. And it's just lovely because we have um, six or seven people that come out and, and uh, really enjoy the experience together. And uh, it's just a lovely, lovely boat to own that uh, eventually, obviously, we'll have to sell and give to somebody else to own. And I presume she'll last for, you know, 100, 150 years if it's looked after properly. Um, and it'll be around for so many people to enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.